without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Brian. Hello, everybody. Wonderful to see your names in the attendee list. Welcome, Henry and Mia and Tatiana and Phyllis and Christopher and Jacqueline and James. Um, so excited to be here with you all and with Kaya, uh, one of our GitLit players. My name is Brian Sonia Wallace. I am the manager of education at GitLit Words Ignite. We are a teen literacy and youth empowerment nonprofit uh, based in the MacArthur Park area of Los Angeles. Uh, but we do work all over LA County and nationally as well. Um, GitLit was founded by Diane Luby Lane with the explicit mission to bring classic poetry into schools with the idea that a classic poem isn't a classic because it's old, it's a classic because it's great. So to bring these poems by the masters into schools, not just to have kids read them and analyze them and uh, sort of do critical work that I think you normally would get in a school, but to actually respond to them and to really elevate youth voices and think about the ways that what our young people have to say uh, is what we need to hear and that these are voices that are important. Um, I was going to say valid, but I think it's beyond valid. It's that these are these are voices that are essential um, and that a way of unlocking those voices is to put them into dialogue. So to say this is a conversation that's happening between the present and the past between generations um, and that's the GitLit model. We've got a bunch of different programs um, that I will share with you through the evening. We have a free Saturday class uh, every Saturday that is open to uh, youth ages 13 through 18. So if you fit in that category and you want more poetry, please come on Saturdays. It's on Zoom in quarantine because here we are. Um, we also have a summer camp coming up, which is July 19th through 30th, which will be in person at the Get Lit offices, you know, with masks and lots of hand sanitizer this year. And uh, would love to invite anyone who's interested also to check that out. Um, I'm the link for uh, Saturday class and all of the programs is gitlit.org. And I'm also putting a link to the form for summer camp if you're interested to express your interest in the chat. Um, but before we get started, I want to see what sort of what sort of action we're able to get in the chat, and then I'll pass things over to Kaya. I'd love to ask everybody just put in the chat right now if you were a food today. What kind of food would you be? So are you like a half eaten hamburger that's been put on the side of the table and forgotten about for like four hours? Um, are you a piece of chocolate cake that's got like just heaps of whipped cream on top? Um, are you just like an apple in a bowl? If you were food today, what food would you be? And see if you can get specific with it like that. See if you can give us a little bit so that we understand the the flavor, no pun intended. We'll take just a minute to do that in the chat. I know it's a little early because most of us are still thinking about what we are, but I think for me, like just to share, because I'm excited, I feel like, you know, you know how like when you make pancakes with your family, you always like make way too many. That might also just might be like an, a unique experience to my family, but I think that's a universal experience. It's like the second to last pancake, not like the bad one that's like touching the plate, but like the second pancake in that stack that's kind of left over. So yeah, I'm the second pancake. The second pancake. Oh man, that's great. I love some of these responses in the chat. These are really these are really evocative. Um, Phyllis says that they're a shriveled prune. I'm so sorry, Phyllis. It happens. I have those days. Um, Tatiana is melted ice cream in its tub, which I love because it's still kind of delicious, but also like. Yikes. Also makes me think uh, tub is just a really great word now that I think about it. I don't think about that word enough. It has sort of multiple meanings too, right? Like there's a tub of ice cream, but there's also like a bathtub. Like I'm imagining with, uh, with Tatiana's, I'm imagining this is like a large tub, you know? <laughs> Not just like Ben and Jerry's. Um, James, yes, I would be a red hot habanero with heaps of vegetables and a nice cool icy jug of water. What? Poetry's already starting off in the chat. That's amazing. Um, 
it sounds so good right now too. It's like just that right like mix of hot and sunny today where I'm like, you know what be really good right now? Spicy food and then ice water. Hydration. Uh, <laughs> hydration. Caroline says, uh, an apple on an apple tree in the middle of a field. Very peaceful, very serene. Henry, I am the juiciest watermelon. I appreciate that level of confidence and also just how like, I don't know. Words are great. <laughs> <laughs> She'll think about juicy, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Jacqueline says peppermint. Cool and refreshing all over. Sweet. Thank you all for, for coming and bringing your whole food selves uh, to this Zoom. Um, we're not able to have video and uh, whatnot on, but we are going to be interacting in the chat. So thank you so much for kind of warming up and checking in in the chat, uh, and we'll be doing a couple of activities in there um, in just a minute. But for now, we have a very special guest. Uh, her name's Kaya. She's a poet. She's a teenager. She has some stuff to tell you. Take it away, Kaya. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, yeah, as Brian already said, um, I'm 17. I'm a senior at Cleveland High School. Um, I've only been writing po poetry for um, almost two years now. Yeah, coming up on two years. Um, and I've been with Get Lit for most of that time. Um, I also wanted to like just say about earlier, there was uh, Brian dropped a link to summer camp. It's a lot of fun. I would really encourage anyone who's interested in that just to check it out. Like, it's really great, especially if you're like not sure or you're just starting out writing. It's really great to meet other writers and get to connect there. We have some really great mentors at Get Lit. So I would definitely encourage anyone who's even interested just to check it out. Um, I'm here because I'm a Get Lit player, um, which has been said a couple of times, but just to give you guys a little bit more of a reference of what that is, um, the Get Lit Players, it's a program that Get Lit does where a bunch of teenagers, um, there's going to be tryouts, I think in September at the beginning of every year, there's tryouts um, where people who are, who just want to try out and get used to more poetry, um, who like to perform and want to learn more and think they're pretty good at it, like you can try out. And um, if you are chosen to be get, a Get Lit player, you will go around um, and perform some poems for people. You can get gigs um, and be uh, like do commission poems for people. You also get to connect with other great poets um, and meet with some of the greatest mentors that Get Lit has to offer. So there's a lot of programs that are available if you guys are interested. Um, and from here, hmm. Uh, from here, I guess, in like honor of how um, you guys were all talking about yourselves in the chat and where you guys are today, um, I'll be sharing a little bit of myself. This is um, my honest poem uh, after Rudy Francisco. If any of you guys are interested, I'd really um, encourage you guys to check out Rudy Francisco's honest poem. It's on YouTube. Um, there's also a lot of really great poems on YouTube, like put in the chat if you guys are interested. Um, because there's some great recommendations for you guys. So yeah, this is my honest poem. The first and last time I have ever been early was when I was born. I was born two and a half months early to be exact. So I've always known I have high standards. Coincidentally, I'm now learning it's okay to tell people when they're too late. I have a problem where people think I'm in love with them. I've been told that I'm friendly kind of in the way that dogs are friendly. I'd like to think that's a compliment because when dogs like you, everyone's caught unaware by the bounding excitement. Being a person though, and not a dog, this causes some problems. <laughs> when I go to parties and want people to like me, I tell them about the injured pigeon I kept in my room for two weeks because I was afraid it would die otherwise. It keeps the wrong people away. I like to think I know which things aren't mine to keep. I've cried over a tomato plant and for everything we had been through together. I want my succulents to teach me how to adapt. I think it's good practice to learn to love something that can't love you back. My returned friend tells me she couldn't trust me back then because I say I love you too much. You know, like. How can you trust something that doesn't understand love and leaves it everywhere like scattered branches or gummed toys, covers the living room with its treasured trash, doesn't see the mess and expects you to believe them? She says she trusts me now, and that's the end of it. But I still wanna tell her I wasn't sure I could find love anywhere. 
so I left it with the people I trust. My sister said that hearing me say I love her now makes her angry for all the times I said it when she was mad. My love became nothing more than an excuse. I just wanted her to know I was sorry. It strikes me as manipulative to write this, to think it okay to tell you how to think about me and arrogant to presume you'll have a lasting impression of me at all. I still feel guilty for everyone who has ever liked me. I feel like I have misled them somehow. I believe that a person's character is who they are when no one's watching, but I am always watching to see if I am good. I don't know who I'm trying to convince, but I hate being insincere to the unknown audience who also doesn't exist. Or maybe it's God. I don't know very much about love, so I'm desperately afraid of it. It's claimed most of the women in my family, but I know that in the core of me is something that can love, or at least that wants to. There is nothing more sacred than my sisters or the way they play Clue. I don't even like Clue. I love the beach, even if it's partly because it takes so long to get there. I want to believe that it's worth it. I want to believe in more things than I actually do. The beach is always colder than I remember. It's a bad habit of mine. I try to remember things kindly, just in case everything has a ghost. Thank you. Go in, Kaya. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Yeah, so um, that is an honest poem, and that is just uh, like getting us all warmed up in what kind, what kinds of things poems can do. Now you guys know a lot about me, um, and you didn't know very much about me before, other than that I was feeling like the second pancake. Um, so that's kind of why Brian and I are, uh, and Carolyn, like that's why we're here to show you guys like what poetry can really do as an entry point, um, and where you can go with it, like what you can do. I've like hearing other people's honest poems and writing mine made me learn a lot about myself and learn a lot about other people. Just, it's something that you don't really get with other mediums of art, I would say. Um, Brian, do you want to take it from here? Well, I was wondering, we're going to be doing a little bit of writing um, in just a minute. We're going to be working, uh, as I mentioned, in this classic response model, which is kind of get lit's trademark. And I wonder, Kaya, if you have a classic response poem pairing to share with us so that we can get a little bit of a sense of it. Um, Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, thank you. So for this next uh, for this next activity, we're going to be doing, uh, like Brian already mentioned, a classic in response. For those of you guys who uh, haven't heard of it, I hadn't heard of it before joining Get Lit. Um, a classic in response is basically when you take a poem that someone else has written, which we call a classic poem, not because it's bad, but because it's good and because it already exists in the world, like instant classic, you know what I mean? So it's when you take someone else's classic poem and respond to it. You see what it inspires in you and like what it makes you think about and you write a poem as a response to someone else's. Um, so here is one of my classic and response poems. Um, my classic is titled, Say Thank You, Say I'm Sorry by Jericho Brown. I don't know whose side you're on, but I am here for the people who work in grocery stores that glow in the morning and close down for deep cleaning at night. Right up the street and in cities I mispronounce, in towns too tiny for my big black car to quit, and in every wide corner of Kansas where going to school means at least one field trip to a slaughterhouse. I want so little. Another leather-bound book, a gimlet with lavender gin, bread so good when I taste it, I can tell you how it is made. I'd like us to rethink what it is to be a nation. I'm in a mood about America. Today, I have PTSD about the Lord. God save the people who work in grocery stores. They know a bit of glamour is a lot of glamour. They know how much it costs for the eldest of us to eat. Save my loves and not my sentences. Before I see them, I draw a mole near my left dimple, add flair to the smile they can't see behind my mask. 
I grin or lie, or maybe I wear the mouth of a beast. I eat wild animals while some of us grow up knowing what gnocchi is. The people at the grocery store don't care. They say, ah, they say thank you. They say sorry. We don't sell motor oil anymore, but the grief so thick you can touch it. Go on, touch it. It is early. It is late. They have washed their hands. They have washed their hands for you. And they take the bus home. So that was Jericho Brown's Say Thank You, Say I'm Sorry. Um, and my response is titled Mercy. The crucifix on her wall watches her get ready for work pulls her shoes on, carefully says goodbye to her wizened mother who makes sure she remembers her name and how to get home. Her memory's going, you see. The doctors call it depression, but at least it's not Alzheimer's. I don't know any of this firsthand. I want to say thank you to God for watching her. Even though I don't believe in him, she is convinced an angel pulled her from that car crash. And God is what has kept her half an ocean away from a husband who abused her. They still pray for each other's health. They're still in love after 30 years. His grace has kept her here. I don't know any of this firsthand. My first grade teacher who moved there looks for her at her job at Sam's Club, but she's lost in the same aisles she's stalked for years. It reminds me of her mother who cleaned hotel rooms when she got here and the weight of this history hangs between my shoulder blades. I don't know any of this firsthand. Look at all the things we shield our children from so they can transition a little easier. I'm so sorry I didn't know. I was so afraid of her accent and her edges. I was so afraid she wouldn't love me, so I never gave her a chance to. I am so afraid that she won't remember me because I never gave her a reason to. But at least the doctors say it's just depression. Immigrants don't believe in mental illness, just hard work, but this is all that 30 years in retail has given her, no health care, but she still says thank you. She thanks God for giving her daughters, even though they don't talk anymore. She thanks America, even though it forgot her birthday. It strikes me that she would have less to celebrate, but she does anyway. I've just learned that her name means mercy. I think I understand it now. I want to say sorry to my grandmother who I never got to know. She's still alive, but now I have all this time to mourn everything we did not have. Thank you. Thank you, Kaya. Kaya, can you talk a little bit, I mean, whew, deep breath, but can you talk a little bit about um, how you went about writing that. So like you talked about, you read the classic and then the response. And so how did you think about taking in the Jericho Brown poem and creating your own work from that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it kind of changed, like everyone has a different way of claiming which classic poem that they love or which poem speaks to them. Um, the first time I ever claimed a classic, I was in Saturday class actually, um, and one of our mentors was reading poems out loud and we had to say like mine in the middle, like we had to cut them off because if you didn't, someone else would have claimed your poem. Uh, so you get, you learn to get really possessive over them. But for this one, um, I was just going through the anthology. Um, oh, by the way, oh, I'll get to that in a second. I was going through the anthology, which is Get Lit's collection, um, curated collection of poems every year. Um, I was going through and just seeing what spoke to me. And when I first read that poem, I was thinking about my grandmother because she works in retail, as you guys heard in the poem. But that really jumped out at me and seeing like all of the ins and outs of this poem. A lot of the a lot of the time when I pick a poem, I'll realize that there's one line that really stands out to me and seeing like how that connects to my life and seeing like what's different and what's similar and what's unique about the classic poem and how it the most experience. I love that so much. The idea of how how the classic poem relates to to something in your life, I feel like, is so the the core of that. And then having that as a jumping off place, I think, is is brilliant. Um, 
Shall we play a game? Yes, please. So I just put uh, I just put the anthology in the chat. Um, if you're joining, hopefully you have the ability to click links. Um, if not, just let me know in the chat and I can can give you a poem in the chat. Um, but what I'd love for everybody to do is go ahead and click that link, gitlitanthology.org, uh, if you're just listening in. So you go to Gitlit Anthology, uh, G E T L I T A N T H O L O G Y dot O R G. Um, and you're going to see a wall of poems. There's so many poems. Um, you can organize them by theme this year uh, in the anthology in honor of Black Lives Matter. All of the poems uh, are by black poets. Um, and here's what I want you to do is I want you to just skim them, like really give yourself permission. Like you're tuning a radio station. You're not here to like listen deep to every song. You're just skimming them and see if there's a line that sticks out to you. And we're going to take just the next 5 minutes to look through this anthology. And I want to see from each person three lines in the chat that stick out to you from different poems from the same poem. See if you can put the name of the poet with it just so that you remember it. But like Kaya said, a great way to start a response poem is to see in the poem, is there a line that you want to like grab onto? So we're going to be thinking about these long, long game. Uh, one of these lines could become the beginning of your response poem. So that's the task for right now. I'll put a little bit of music on um, and we're just going to take the next five minutes. See if you can find three lines, put them in the chat with the poet who wrote them uh, that speak to you in whatever way, three lines that you like. And we'll see you back at it's 426 right now. So 431. We'll check in. Go ahead and put the lines as you find them. All right. Whew. Ah, take a minute, take a breath. Thank you all for diving in and um, spending a little bit of time with poetry. I think a great universal rule of thumb if you're looking to start writing, if you feel like you have writer's block, whatever it is, is let yourself browse, you know, get four or five books and open them to random pages and read between the lines and don't force yourself to go deep into any one of them, but just let yourself skim and let the language kind of free associate and do what it does to you. Um, thank you for doing that. We have some amazing lines in the chat. Um, do you want to, Kaya, do you want to uh, tag them and just go one one after the other? Sure. Wow. Like I, I was like writing down on paper, so I'm like coming back to the chat. So yeah, sorry. I'm just like going through it now. Um, okay. Yeah, just to go up here. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to read yours first, but that would make more sense if you did it. <laughs> oh, no, I want you to do it. Okay. So Brian in the chat so generously shared, nothing is full of something. A mass that grows where you cut at it uh, by Kristen Hill. Mm. Tatiana shared, you do not have to die this certain day. Death will abide, will pamper your postponement. I assure you, death will wait. That's Gwendolyn Brooks. To the young who want to die. Oh, that's such a good oh, thing. Uh, Phyllis shared, these skeletal lines, they are desperate arms for my longing and love by June Jordan. Wow, I've never, I haven't, like, I've seen the anthology a bunch of times. How did I miss that one? Thank you, Phyllis. Every time I go through it, I swear I see, like, I just saw a Saul Williams poem that I was like, wait, what? I have not read this before and I need to. Um, Carolyn shared, let them, let him enter the lion's cage and find a feel of lilacs. That's the Ned Smith, who's based up in Minneapolis. Oh, uh, I saw one of his sets. He is so cool. Um, yeah, and next up, uh, yours again, I am no mountain, but rather a monsoon of imperfect thunder, love me, by Anise um, Mojgani. Oh man, Anise, I don't know if you know this, Kaya, Anise was like the first spoken word artist that I saw where I was like, oh wait, like I am having big feelings and I need to watch this compulsively and sit down for a minute. Um, so cool. Jacqueline shared another Lucille Clifton, if there is a river more faithful than this, returning each month to the same delta. I Poem in praise of menstruation, I think. Gosh, that's such a good one. Everything I have ever heard about Lucille Clifton just makes me like love her writing more. So I'm so glad other people share that. 
Uh, Carolyn shared, but I don't want to read faster or older or any way else that might make this make the story disappear too quickly from where it's settling inside my brain, slowly becoming a part of me. Jacqueline Woods. That's when I feel like one of my favorites that's in our um, middle school anthology as well. And like, it's amazing because the start of that poem is, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, it's about being told to read faster, read older and like, no, like, I just want to read what I want to read. This can be fun. And then James, thank you for closing us off. James shared, you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. And of course, Maya Angelou. Iconic. Uh, Iconic. Cool. Thank you all for bringing these these lines in and for, for scavenger hunting and for sharing them. Um, here is your task now is we're going to use those lines. You can, um, and if you got more than one, you can choose one of them. Um, read through the whole poem and see how you would respond to it. So the way that I like to think about this is um, you can either choose, for instance, that line or one part of that line and just start your poem with that. Um, they always say, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Uh, it's absolutely in poetry to quote another poet is something that is done all the time. So don't feel like you are, you know, going to get in trouble for it. Um, so you have two options. One is you can take one of those lines that you loved and you can start a poem with it and then see what do I have to say? If I were to continue this, what would I, what would my thing be? Um, the other thing that you can do is you can think about writing a response to it. that's more along the lines of Kaya's response that she shared earlier, which is thinking about what are the associations um, that you have with this? So for Kaya earlier, it was okay. This poem's talking about retail. Retail makes me think of my grandparents. I'm gonna write a poem about my grandmother and her life experience. So two options, you can either choose a line and continue it with your own poem, or you can look at the poem and you can think about what's your association with it and write a poem about that theme. So maybe the poem is about love. And so you'd say, well, what does love mean to me? Or maybe the poem's about death. And you would say, how does death show up for me in this moment? How am I thinking about death? Um, and we are going to free write, my friends, which means uh, see if you can get your fingers at the keyboard or your pen moving without stopping for the next 10 minutes. If you write, I don't know what to write five times, that's great. If you, write the same sentence twice, that's completely okay. We're going to try to get out of our own way as editors and just allow ourselves to be writers, just allow ourselves to be conduits and let whatever comes out, come out. Um, I'll be, oh, go ahead, Kaya. I also just wanted to add in the sense of like in responding to a poem, because the first time, like, <laughs> gosh, I was so intimidated my first time responding to a poem. So this is your guys' first time. If you saw something that's also like, hmm, I kind of disagree with this or like, that those also make for some of the most fun responses. Like you don't have to love everything that you read. Um, and we would definitely love to hear what you what you think about other people's. Like that's why we respond. I love that arguing with the poem. <laughs> cool. So we're going to take the next 10 minutes to do that. Um, feel free to spend the first minute or so reading over the um, classic that you pulled the quote from to start us off with and then see if you can get right into the writing. Um, it is 438 right now, so we'll come back at 448. Um, I and I will share a little bit of what we write and would love to, if you are writing on a computer or something where it's easy to copy paste it into the chat, we'd love to see it in the chat as well uh, and read it if you give us permission to share your work. If not, um, we'll just ask everyone to share one at the end. So low pressure, don't edit. And I'll see you back at, well, it's 439 now. So let's call it uh, 449. Happy writing. All right. And we will slowly meander back in. Oh, how was that? Um, folks who've been writing, if you want to put in the chat on a scale of one to six, with one being like, that was terrifying i was lost it was dark uh i don't know who i am or what words mean anymore and six being you know i am now the president of language 
that was the best. I, uh, you know, I'm going to write a dictionary. One to six. How was it? James says six. Yes, that was great. I love it. And I know James is uh, James is is a, a consummate writer. Kaya too. Very sorry, I'm out of words. Legit, it happens. Oh my God. Well, lucky lucky day for you, Kaya, that you're in the, in the video to share. Tatiana said six as well. Amazing. Um, so happy to hear that. Uh, Kaya, would you would you share your would you share your two? Absolutely. So, I mean, one of the things I love about going to these workshops is because some days, uh, some days I am not a, as much of a writer as I am yesterday, and that's nice because I am yeah. still a writer and I am still a poet. Um, but I will warn you guys today. Um, I think I used all of my words earlier, um, but that's okay. Uh, I, as my classic that I'm responding to, um, I chose "Beauty Is My Revenge" by uh, Kokomo. And I realized that I don't like half of what I wrote and it's not part of it. So, um, so to take Kokomo's uh, line, unfortunately, the necessity of survival always trumps the longing for escape. But your body becomes the beach. Do you think they felt trapped in Eden? All the lush greenery, the line of the borders. A daz this is my a dazzling gate that opens called fortress, where safety does not mean solitude, where you are allowed to live. That's as mm. far as Did you read that last line one more time for me, Kaya? Where safety does not mean solitude, where you are allowed to walk in it. Mm, I love that where safety does not mean solitude. And then that image of walking is so embodied and so like active and present. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing it too. I think it's so important to share it too and to be like, hey, this is this is what it looks like. Because I feel like one of the things that is uh, a huge part of Get Lit and, and any writing process is the editing and taking your two days and mining them for, for the nuggets of gold. Um, James, I know that you asked to say share your poem by saying it instead of typing it. I think just because of the format that we're on here with the library, we're not able to allow participants to unmute. Um, what I will say is I would love to see any of these poems and would be happy to give feedback. If you want to uh, email them to me at brian at getlit.org, I just put that in the chat. Um, and if you do want to type it out or even just type out a line or two would love to see them in the chat. Um, so we'll make a little time and space for that. Can I read you what I uh, worked on, Kaya? Please. Oh my goodness. So this is after uh, Indigo On by Saul Williams. And the line that spoke to me was, stop letting cities define you, confine you to that which is cement and brick, which like I just hadn't heard before. Um, this is what I wrote. I read your streets dictionary. Go into the youth thesaurus store and ask for a word. Get told they sold the last synonym to a non-binary crust punk from Toledo. You are every etymology my grandparents lost along the way. Each lamppost was planted in honor of a dead father. I breeze like a banner that's outlived its commemoration. Ask city services. They'll roll me up and put me in a box to take home with you. The lettering's faded by the wind. Every yield sign means it personal. Every stop sign knows not what it speaks. The streets all trade names when no one is watching. The double yellow line is a single mom. Don't mess with her. What's your maintenance budget? And how soon can you start? Oh my God. Thank you, Brian. I'm just, I, I I wanted to shout out lines and I was like collecting them in my brain as you were reading, but then there's like so many, like the, um, you are every etymology your grandparents lost. I love how that is like one of the main uh, and few like lines about you and, or about uh, you in the poem and then talking about yourself, the banner line. Uh, I don't know where to start. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Ah, we've got Jacqueline uh, was able to share 
their poem based on Clifton. Do you want to read it out for us so we have it in the air? Oh my gosh. I'm so, yeah, absolutely. I just hope I can do it justice. This is okay. So from Jacqueline, based on, um, based on Lucille Clifton's um, poem and praise of menstruation. There is a river more faithful than this, returning each month to the same delta, stretched from, stretched from lands of the milk people of Russia sideways through the Middle East to America. A lineage of women with heartbeat connections gather to dismiss their dreams. It comes to this often, a place where dreams begin to shed, layers upon layers. I am with you now and always through this faithful river. Mother, sister, daughter, stretched sideways too. Oh man, we got some poets. The lineage of women with heart great heartbeat connections gather to dismiss their dreams. Like I'm gonna be thinking about that for a long time. And then the ending too. I mean, I don't know if it was intentional or, or not, because sometimes things get cut off, but stretched sideways too. Just T-O without punctuation is the ending is so interesting. This is so gorgeous. I have to say like stre uh, stretched and sideways is such like a gorgeous idea. Like one of the things I love about poems and one of the things that I love about language now is seeing like, wow, I have never seen these words together. I have never seen those words together and I think that they're brilliant and I will never not think of your words, Jack. Thank you for sharing that with us. Wow. Oh, and Tatiana just gave us a response to Gwendolyn Brooks to the young who want to die. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Um, let's see how it goes. You do not have to die this certain day. The key phrase is this certain day, but often death finds you with no escape. For the fallen soldier, it must be this certain day. For a cancer patient, it must be this certain day. For a victim of murder, it must be this certain day. For a child trapped and alone and carted away, it must be this certain day. Nowhere else will death linger, but inside the hearts of abused saints. If I could change this, I would. Alas, cruel death will not stray, and so it must be this certain day. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love the the hearts of abused saints. It just it's such an evocative line. I just wow. Like someone has mastered repetition. Thank you. And that couplet at the end, if you wanna, I mean it's like the Shakespeare standby, right? Like if you want to end a poem and have them remember that last line, like finish off with a rhyming couplet. And the list too, there's something really interesting about that repetition. Shout out to that. It reminds me almost, um, and like if you're interested in this, if anyone else is interested, it almost reminds me of the classic poem in the anthology. Um, the title of this poem is, um, I think, or that's, or that's, I think that's the name of the poem. And if it's not, it's the repetition in it. I might be making that up, but okay, yes, I know that that is there. So wow, so it reminds me of a of a classic poem in our anthology, which speaks to how amazing I think the poem was. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Yeah. And Kaya, it looks like we've got we got two minutes and James just wrote their whole poem in the chat. Thank you so much, James, for bearing with our technology. Would love to hear you read it, Kaya, and close us off and then we'll pass things back to Caroline. Absolutely. So uh, hoping I can give. I know, James, I'm so sorry that I have to read this instead of you, but I will try to do my best. Um, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me into the very dirt, but still like dust, I will rise. You may taunt me with your dirty words, mock my heritage, but I won't care. For like dust, I will rise. In times of trouble, when all seems hard and desperate, I will rise. I may not know what comes before me, whether evildoers do harm to me or death walks across my path, I will rise. In this messed up world, when things go wrong, I like am treated badly, but like dust, I will rise. This is all past to me. Why should I dwell on it? I need to look into the future, rise to it. But like death, I will rise. I saw something new in the Maya Angelou poem that I hadn't seen before, which is dust. Still like dust, I rise. But the idea of dust is the past. This is all past to me. I hadn't, I, I was just thinking of dust as lightness, but dust is totally past and the idea of the past rising. And, and I think you, you 
yeah, you showed me that in this poem. Thank you, James. And like death, I will rise. Like that's, I don't, I don't even know what it is. It's, it's a, it's a transformation, you know? I love it, especially in the um, taunt me with your dirty words, but like, there was a part of it where I felt like almost like almost like a prayer. It just, yeah, it was such a gift to be able to read that. Thank you for sharing that, James. Thank you all of my friends. It is it is five o'clock, so we are uh, at the end of our time together. Would love to encourage you. The Get Lit Anthology is there. It's for you to take and read if ever you need a start to your poems, getlitanthology.org. Um, it's updated every year, so every year there's uh, every summer uh, at the end of every summer there's new poems uploaded there. Um, so happy to be able to be here with you and share a little bit of the classic and response model. Um, get to hang out with you, Gaia, uh, and to hear your your beautiful work. Back to you, yeah. Galen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Gaia. No, no, sorry, no. sorry, Carol. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you all enjoyed the program. I certainly did. Um, got my creative writing juices flowing, and I'm so inspired by all the poems and the words that everybody who joined us and shared with us today. And uh, it'll they'll certainly the words will certainly stay with me for a long Karen, time. Can you, can you share a line with us that you wrote? I want to hear what that, you wrote. That I wrote? Yeah. Like the whole thing? Oh. <laughs> or, or, line, or a line, or the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I wrote, um, like, let him enter the lion's cage and find a field of lilac. That's what I used. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, maybe I don't go in. Maybe I choose not this. Maybe the lion isn't even there. Maybe it is an empty arena. Weapons fall on the ground. Warriors and beasts gone home to rest. Sorry. <laughs> like, sorry, good enough. <laughs> this set a scene. Oh, my God. The empty cages and the lines, the weapons falling to the ground. Oof. I mean, yeah, it was a really amazing exercise, um, and I'm probably going to do it a lot more in the future. Um, so a big thank you to Brian and Kai for sharing this with us, sharing us all about Get Lit. Please, please check them out. They do amazing programs, um, and thank you for leading us in this workshop and helping to express ourselves and connect with all kinds of new poems. Um, I also wanted to mention that our spring and summer discovery program has started. Um, I'd like to invite you and your family and your friends to participate in our annual celebration of reading, learning, and curiosity for people of all ages going on now through August 8th. Each month's challenge encourages you, encourages you to log books you read and complete activities. And every month you complete, you'll have an opportunity to win prizes. Um, and they're pretty good. So, um, so you can sign up online at lacountylibrary.org slash spring dash summer dash discovery. I'll put it in the chat or stop by your local library to pick up a game card and activity ideas. And if you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at lacountylibrary.org. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you so much, Brian and Kaya. Um, have a good night. Oh, Phyllis just asked oh, really quickly, okay. uh, Saturday classes and summer program. Um, Saturday classes are absolutely free. Uh, summer program is a two week program, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, July 19th through 30th. Uh, the cost of the program is $500, but we do also have scholarships available. Thanks for that, Phyllis. Great, thank you. And if you have any other questions or curious about Gail, again, you can check their website or you can email um, Brian or me um, back and we I'm happy to connect you. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and end the program. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.